Because presumably if you didn't do that, everything would just go bang. If you want more power from your engine, a good way to go about that is by fitting a turbocharger. Now, one option you have is to go for a hybrid turbo, but what does that actually mean and how is one of those made? To find out, Matt and I are here at Turbo Technics. I'm going to find out how they're made and I'm going to look at how all of that comes together. So what exactly does a turbocharger actually do? In simple terms, your turbo is made up of two systems, your compressor and your turbine, and then these are joined in the middle by this shaft and bearing system here. So on the turbine side, we have hot exhaust gases coming out of the engine. The turbine extracts all this energy from the pressure and from the heat, transmits it through the shaft to spin up the compressor. Your compressor sucks in the air from your air filter and your induction system, chucks it out through the internal scroll in the compressor housing and then this goes off to your engine which increases your power. Your oil feed runs in from the top, feeds the two journal bearings here which keep the shaft nice and central and uh, feeds the thrust bearing at the front which stops the shaft and wheel assembly moving forwards and backwards and then that runs through the bottom. So we have the most conventional control system on this turbo which is a pressure fed pneumatic actuator. So that takes boost pressure from the compressor. As the pressure increases the diaphragm and the piston in the actuator move, which in turn opens the wastegate on the turbine side, and that bleeds the exhaust gases away to reduce the pressure, reduce the turbo speed, and reduce your boost. Because presumably if you didn't do that, everything would just go bang. The original hybrid turbos get their name from just mixing and matching parts. What we do now is change various parts in the turbo, put new parts in, we might modify some of the original parts, and then that creates your hybrid turbo. There are actually different levels of hybrid turbo, aren't there? So could you talk us through what we have here. So down here we've got a couple of examples of your most basic hybrid. So both of these have got enlarged compressor wheels with reprofile compressor housings to match and upgraded thrust bearings. So we like to take things a little bit further. All of these have completely redesigned bearing systems. This turbo here has a completely different core and a new compressor housing. Finally, we have the God tier turbos. So what's going on here? In our bespoke performance hybrids, there are no reused parts from the original turbo. This gives us the freedom to use whatever bearing system we like, use whatever upgraded parts we like from all sorts of different turbo types, as well as making our own parts to get the job done. So the benefit of these turbos is that it gives you uncompromised performance, but they still fit onto your car as the original turbo did, without the expense of changing lots of parts to make them fit. And now a shout out to this week's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is an epic fantasy battle game where players collect artifacts and gems to level up and unlock new features and rewards. The stronger you become, the better champion you'll be. From the index screen, you can head to the portal and summon champions. My favorites are Rocktooth and Grumbler. Upgrade your champions in the tavern, and when you're ready to battle, you can team up and fight against the clan boss, battle against each other in the arena, or embark upon a campaign. I love the amazing graphics that really immerse you in the fantasy experience. It's no wonder it's been downloaded 15 million times in the last six months. New players will get 100,000 silver coins and this awesome champion, Hexweaver, a formidable character who will kickstart your quest for free. These rewards are only available for 30 days through the link in the description. So get downloading, find your rewards in the game inbox and get battling. See you out there and good luck. Right, so we've done enough talking, now let's get to the exciting part. We've got this housing, so let's get it machined and see how that works. Right, so Matt, what's going on inside here? We've just put the housing in and now it's in some sort of massive washing machine. What's going on? So we attach the turbine housing casting to a fixture on the spindle and then we use a sharp cutting tool to gradually remove material layer by layer. And the water there, that's just to cool everything down? Partly to cool both the tool and the part um, and also to lubricate at the point of cutting. Right, so now that we have our machine housing, Max, what is the next step? Machine the inlet flange here. Let's go. So here is one we made earlier. Matt, tell me what exactly has happened? It looks very different and we've got some holes as well. In this operation, we're machining the inlet flange face, nice and flat, putting in this clearance cut here, the holes to fix it to the exhaust manifold, and then machining the groove for the exhaust gasket or firing as some people call it here. 
The next part is thrust bearings, which are really quite crucial to a turbo, aren't they? Quickly explain to me, what does a thrust bearing do? The thrust bearing is the part which stops the forward and backward movement of the shaft with the turbine and compressor wheels on it. So we need to get a good supply of oil to these parts to make sure that it stays exactly where it's supposed to be. So we machine this blank out of a piece of bar, and then we come over to this machine to put in the oil feed gallery, the ramping, and the drain groove. And the drain groove is alongside here, and the actual oil supply goes through that tiny little hole there, doesn't it? Right, so we've machined the turbo housing. We've had a look at the thrust bearing, and now we're having a look at the back plates of the turbo and the compressor wheel, because this is standard. This is a larger compressor wheel. As you can see, it doesn't fit. This is one that we made earlier, and look at that. Oh, glorious. So let's see how that process happens. Because we've changed the bearing housing from the original, we need to make sure the standard oil feed still fits. So we have a little insert adapter, which we make here, specially designed for this turbo, which we then drill for in the bearing housing, tap it out, and then fit that in there. And here's one I made earlier. So that will now fit the standard oil feed. Because we know what drilling looks like, we're not gonna show you that. We're gonna move on to the next thing, which is even more awesome. I don't know what it is, what is it? Welding. Welding! Let's go welding. Wrong way. So the key component is your wastegate valve, which is this part here. That's gonna cover up the bleed port or the wastegate port so that you can build up the boost pressure. So the next major part is the arm, which connects to the valve. That goes through the turbine housing supported by this bush. And then you have your crank arm and your crank pin. And then these are attached to the other end of the arm and joined to the actuator. And then when your actuator opens, that allows the valve to open. And then you break the law and then you obey the speed limits rigidly. You heard it here first. Right, so there you go. Production is done. Now we need to head to assembly, is that correct? That is correct. Any final words? Yes, I would like to say thank you very much for being with me. I'm now here with Dean and he's gonna show me how it all goes together and maybe he'll let me try a few bits myself and then probably throw it in the bin afterwards because I've ruined it. This is the bearing housing, which is the first part we use on the core assembly. Um, we have a circlip here that prevents the journal bearing from dropping out. The journal bearing has a anti-rotation plate on it which is this part, that goes in next, and there's a circlip that holds that in. Got an O-ring here for the seal for the back plate. Next part is a thrust washer. And should it just that's, drop that's in? That's fine, or? that's it. It's okay. just, see, it will sit there. The thrust bearing goes in on top of that. And then this is a, an oil deflector, um, which prevents the oil from returning back. Right, so this should just drop on there. This is the um, thrust collar. It has a small piston ring on it. You can put that piston ring onto that collar, and then this will go into the back plate, and then that goes onto there. So your core assembly is nearly done now. Turn it over. We've got like a heat shroud, it protects the back of the shaft. This is obviously a shaft wheel. So that um, should just drop into there now. So this is our billet um, compressor wheel. That Nice, smooth fit. Then we have a nose nut, which is going to enable us to balance it as well. So with the core of the turbo finished, the next stage is to get it balanced. This is the oil feed supply. So I think we're ready to shut the door and run it up. The red part is the the imbalance of our core. We'll take a grind off the front of the nose nut.
So we're looking a lot better now. And now it's good to go and we can get the innards of the turbo into the housing. Which means it's back to the workbench. If you just take the core and just drop it into the turbine housing. Look at that. Clamp that holds the core into the turbine housing. So the next part is our compressor housing, an O-ring. Stops the air escaping, you can pop that on there if you like to. Just in that little groove there, that's it. And then the compressor housing. You'll just feel a bit of resistance, but it should just pop on. Okay, so we're just setting this compressor angle now. And then we'll just nip up the two bolts that I've already put on the compressor housing so it doesn't move when we assemble the rest of it. This is the actuator bracket. Uh, air fitting that goes into the compressor housing. And then it's the final part of it, which is the actuator. It's got like a protective heat shield if you wanted to poke that through there. And you've got two, that's it, yeah. And then we've got um, the rod end not lock nut, and then the rod end itself, which is the other bit, screws onto there. So we've got a dial here, you just wind it up to 0.4 on the 0.4 bar. And that's perfect. Do the lock nut up on the actuator, and then put the little rod end clip on it so our rod end doesn't fall off. And before too long, this will be under the bonnet of the Fiesta, making it uh, develop lots of power. Today has definitely been a school day for us. Hopefully it has been for you guys too. So all that we want to say now is a massive thank you to Turbo Technics for hosting us and for showing us the ropes. I guess all that's left to say now is make sure you subscribe to the Car Throttle channel by clicking on this link. And to check out more of these similar videos, the link is down there. Right, I'm going to now pick up my turbo because the guys have probably made me one. Is that right? No, 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 getting, no turbo. getting black looks and shake heads. Right, I'm going to, I'm going to take the bus. See ya. Bye.